in, in Psalms 118, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. I like to use the word. Oh, give thanks unto God because he's awesome. Not just good. He's an awesome God. We already said his name's above every other name where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. I put my hope, my trust in the Lord. It continues to say in this portion of scripture, I call upon the Lord in my distress. How many of us get distressed sometimes? Oh, 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 and we whine and we cry. But who do we call upon? In my distress, I call upon the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, those who call upon him shall be what? Saved. Yeah. So I don't care about what physically is going on with this little old Puerto Rican body of mine. Don't care. Because greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. So the enemy... We used to sing this song years ago. It's under my feet, yeah, yeah. I can't sing. It's under my feet, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how it goes, but I just remember, he's under my feet. Talking about Satan is under my feet. We're going to crush his head. And today, this is what I'm believing for you today, church. Today, to rise up and to believe beyond your own comprehension. To believe beyond your own comprehension. Oh, that, that can't happen. Oh, yes, it can. Because all things are possible to them who believe. Do you believe this morning? How about for an unsaved loved one? You got an aunt. You got an uncle. You got a brother. You got a sister. You got a mom. You got a dad. You have a child that's not walking with Jesus today. Have these words ever come out of your mouth? No, they will never, never get saved. By the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And the Bible declares that there, there's life and death in the power of this thing. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So if we speak this negativity, they will never come. Do you think they're going to come? Absolutely not. I saw my sister over there. She goes, "Mm -mm, no way. But do you believe today? Here's a little story found in the book of of John chapter 11. Join with me real quick. And and, and we all know the story. It's it's about Lazarus. Did I say that right, hon? Lazarus. Everybody knows this story, right? Lazarus was sick. Mary and Martha, his sisters, and not just sick, but something happened to Lazarus. What happened to him? He died. Jesus heard that he was sick and makes these comments in, in verse number four. Jesus heard and he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God might be glorified thereby. He heard of his sickness because the sister sent out a servant to go find Jesus and let him know. Why do you think they were calling upon Jesus and letting him know that Lazarus was sick? See, Jesus loved Mary and Martha, and, and he loved Lazarus. They were friends. They would, Jesus would come into Bethany, and they would hang out and have dinner together. They had a good time. They were in relationship. So immediately when, 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 when Lazarus was in this state of being, his sisters sent forth a servant to go tell Jesus. And Jesus, you know, cool, calm, and collected, says, listen, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And it says there that he hung around where he was at for another couple of days. And Jesus realized, and the story continues, that Lazarus did die. And Jesus heads back over there, and Martha heard that Jesus was coming, and she goes running to Jesus, and, and she says, Lord, if you, were, if you were here, this wouldn't have happened. Many translation. This wouldn't have happened. If you were here, this wouldn't have happened. 
And Jesus says unto her, he says, your brother's going to rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know he's going to rise again at the resurrection the last day. But Jesus said unto her, I am. I love those two words. I am the resurrection and the life. He that what? It's a cool word, isn't it? He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And he asked her like, he asked her this in a question. Do you believe this? My question to us this morning. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus declares himself here as the resurrection and the life. And he questions Martha and he says, do you believe this? The story continues, says, well, where did you put him? Lazarus, we know, was in a grave. He was in a cave, and there was a stone there. And, and, and Jesus tells them to remove the stone. And once again, here's Martha saying what? But Lord, he's been in there for four days. Hmm, four days. These are her words. He stinketh. <laughs> Loving sister. <laughs> he stinketh already. He's been in there four days. What did Jesus ask her to do? Ask them to do? He didn't ask if he stinks. He didn't ask how many days he was dead. He simply said, move the stone away. An act of obedience on our part, folks. Do we believe that he is the resurrection and the life? Are there stones in your way? Are there stones in the midst of your lives that's blocking your miracle? Is there? Roll it away. Move it away. Jesus is saying, roll the stone away. He didn't ask for anything else. He didn't ask for this, that, and the other thing. Who cares if he stinks? I'm asking you to move the stone away. There are some things that are hindering miracles within our lives. Maybe it's sin. The Bible says that we're to lay aside every sin and weight that so easily besets us. To lay it aside. Maybe we're being disobedient in a certain area of our lives. And we're hindering the supernatural move of God within us because of our own disobedience. Maybe we just have a bunch of excuses why we don't do certain things and we're hindering a miracle. Jesus asked for the stone to be rolled away. And I love it when, as Jesus is standing there and he's looking at all the people and he says these little words, Lazarus. <laughs> Come on out. Many translation. Lazarus, come forth. What happened? Folks, what happened? At this moment, what happened? Here comes Lazarus out of the grave. Why am I walking funny? Why? He's wrapped up. He's coming out of the grave. It was a miracle, a supernatural move of God. Four days in a, in, in a tomb. Hey, come forth. I'm coming out. What were Jesus' words to everybody else around him? Anybody know those words? Oh, yeah. Loose him. Let him go. See, there's a supernatural move ready to happen in your life, and God is going to do it. God is, going, God is going to raise you up. He's taking you out of darkness and placed you in marvelous light. If you are saved, if you accepted the Lord, you believing in him, 
You will not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. If you believe, you're saved. There's a supernatural move. Now the next thing is, are the people around you to help loose you and set you free? Amen. I said, we're the light of the world. We're getting into this, this revival, uh, setting up this tent, 3,000 people tent. I hope they're not all Christians, Pastor. Re really? You know who comes to Christian events? Christians. Stay home. Send somebody else so they get a seat. Somebody who don't know the Lord. Or even better, come on, my brother. Grab them and take them to church. Take them to the revival tent. Run them around. I don't care how you get them there. Get them there. Thank you, brother. I wish I had that hair. Look at that thing. Man. Oof. <laughs> Hey, listen, bald is beautiful, right, my brother? We're good. <laughs> bald is beautiful. Loosing them and setting them free, taking people to church, getting the, the men and women in our community out to receive their miracle. I love the fact where it, it, whoever's ministering that night and just says, hey, you and you and you, hey, come forth from the grave. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You're going to see all these people come walking to the altar to receive Jesus. Their miracle that day. Their miracle. They were once dead, but now they're alive. And the church folk around, get involved in this thing. Get, connect to, to the pastors and, and everybody who's working this thing and connect so this way you come in and start ripping off. Their grave clothes, setting them free, encouraging them, being right next to them every single day, being a partner to them. And this is what Jesus was saying here. He already declares he's the resurrection and the life, but his question to us is this, do we believe it really? See, it's great that we're here in church, folks. It's great, Sunday morning, we're gonna get charged up, we're gonna get fired up, but what about Monday? What about Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? And then back again here on Sunday? Is it just pastor's job up here to, uh, to, to preach the word? To teach the word? To lay hands on the sick? Is it pastor's response? Oh, he gets paid for that stuff. Bet you don't get paid much. <laughs> I know. Is it just the pastor's responsibility to lead people to the Lord? No. Jesus, loose them. Let him go. Verse 45, and many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen things which Jesus did, believed on him. Jesus was there. Mary was there. Martha was there. But all the other people around too. And it's our responsibility, folks, to go into the highways and byways and set people free. Do you believe this? And I'll keep asking. Do you believe this? Some are going like this. Some are going, some are going like this. I'm sorry, I'll wake you up. I want you to receive something this morning. And I, like I said, I share with the guys and I was excited about this service. I want you to receive your miracle. But as you receive, begin to walk in the fullness that God's given you today. Go out and be a witness. Go out and be a testimony of what God has done. Hi, I'm Pastor John McConnell, and I'd like to welcome you today for watching our program. It's just amazing the technology we have today that we're able to live stream all around the world. And we'd like to give you an opportunity, if you'd like to give towards this ministry, you can go online and be able to uh, follow the directions that are on there and be able to give to the ministry that you've been watching. So God bless you. We thank you for being part of Southside Alliance Church today.